Welcome to the Bulb Girl Podcast. I'm Kyra Mitchell Lewis, and thank you all for joining. Hope everyone is doing well out there. I hope your week is going well. All right, so last time we chatted, we talked the signs you should look out for if you are considering leaving your job. There was a really long list. (laughs) And I decided that we would split those up into two episodes. So I gave you 10 last week. And then today I'll give you the remaining. So let's do a quick recap for the of those 10. So one, you feel burnt out and exhausted. Two, you see no growth. Three, your workplace is toxic. Four, your company has no future. Five, you are undercompensated. Six, You found a better opportunity. Seven, you do not have any work-life balance. Eight, you feel uninspired and unengaged. Nine, your skills are not being enhanced. And number 10, your mental well-being is at risk. So let's just go ahead and dive in. So we'll continue. We'll pick up with number 11. You are finding ethical misalignment. So... What does that mean? It means that somebody, you feel like somebody is doing something shady in your company (laughs) and it is compromising your personal values. So um, it happens, right? It does, it happens and it doesn't just happen on like TV shows. Um, There was, I had a job, uh, probably like a few jobs back where, I don't know, just sort of felt to me like there was some shady stuff happening. Like I would hear one thing from leaders and then they would do like the opposite thing. And ultimately it just felt like for me personally, like my values and felt like it was being compromised because I couldn't trust them. And I felt like people couldn't trust them. So that was a big reason for me, like wanting to, like move on. So it doesn't necessarily have to be that someone's in there embezzling money, right? It could be something just really small to you that as uh, for your morals, it doesn't feel right. And that's okay. It's okay if for you not to feel like you're being compromised, having to compromise your values. So that's definitely something to think about. Number 12, your health is being affected. So we talked about your mental well-being the last time, but if you are having like physical like um, issues, you're stressed, you've got high blood pressure, or you've got, you're having migraines or anything is happening where your job leads to you feeling like you physically are it's taken a physical toll on you is definitely a reason to think about moving on because workplace stress, here's a stat, workplace stress has become, you know, a general mental health concern, which eventually leads to physical issues too. About 83% of working professionals suffer from it in the U.S. 83%. That's a lot. That's, that's like, that's more than half, (laughs) more than half of the working professionals. So definitely something you don't want to wait until it's too long, too late. And also too, you know, I'll say this while we're on the health, like going to keeping doctor's appointments, um, going to have regular checkups, all that is important because I can't tell you the number of times where I hear people are like, oh yeah, I'm going to, um, I'm, I'm going to, I just need to move that back because we're so busy and you know, your health doesn't wait. And, you know, illness doesn't wait. It doesn't wait until you've got like time to deal with it. So just make sure that you are putting your health first. And if you see that as a recurring issue or you feel stressed at your job, maybe it's time to consider moving on. Number 13, lack of passion. If your job, if you've got no purpose, you're going to have no passion to do it. And if you've got no passion, your productivity is going to decrease. If you cannot view your job as a career, but you just see it as a job, then chances are you are probably needing to look for something else because you're not utilizing or being utilized to your fullest potential. If you lack passion, it's definitely a sign 
that you need to look elsewhere. All right, number 14. You don't feel empowered to share your voice or that you have a voice. We talked about this um, in uh, another episode about building influence, right? And having a point of view and being able to share your voice. If you're in a place where you don't feel like you can ever like speak up because someone's going to criticize or someone's going to, you know, seem uninterested in your um, opinion, then it might be time to look elsewhere. Because one of the, mo- the most important things about being in an organization is having the ability to have an opinion <laughs> and to like have a say so. And things, and I, and I think that's um, definitely important. And it's important for, for people to feel like they are seen and heard. And if you don't feel seen and heard in your workplace, then it's definitely time to look elsewhere. Number fifteen, you often receive negative criticism. Now look, some corrective criticism or feedback. I would say I don't want to call it criticism feedback, some productive feedback or like feedback that helps you to grow, feedback that helps you to say, oh, okay, yeah, I got it. I need to do this the next time. You know, that's good because you're not always going to get positive feedback, right? Um, But if you're in a situation where you're always getting negative feedback, you're always getting deemed, someone's always saying something that is looking to bring you down, then you need to consider moving on. Positive feedback, as we all know, can help you upskill and eventually get promotional opportunities in your company. But if your managers or senior leaders offer, like all they do is give you negative criticism, well, first of all, it's going to hinder your growth, but it's going to hinder the overall company's growth because people are going to be uninspired and they're not going to be engaged. So if this is something that you're seeing in your workplace, consider moving on. Number 16, this is a good one. You often procrastinate. A feeling of procrastination often takes over all of us in a while. Me too. I think sometimes I like to, side note, I think sometimes I'm driven at the fact of like, if I just wait to do something because Sometimes I'm like, I got to get that, you know, that spark, that creativity. Some projects I like hold on because I'm like, I'm not there yet. It's not, I don't really feel like doing it. But I think we know the difference, right? I think we know the difference between like procrastinating because it's like a motivator (laughs) for some and procrastinating because you're just like, I don't want to be here. And I think that's what happens when you don't want to be somewhere and you're feeling uninspired, you're feeling unengaged, you don't want to do your daily tasks, you think about, um, you know, you don't, you don't want to be there. Um, it's hard for you to get stuff done just because you're just like, oh man, I'm going to push this off until the very last minute. So if you find yourself in that scenario, then it may be time for you to move on to a different role, find a new opportunity. Number 17, your manager is intolerable. (laughs) Is that a good reason to quit? (laughs) I think if you do not have a good working relationship with your manager um, and your manager can't handle, you know, doesn't know how, I think a lot of times, if a manager can't handle conflict or if you don't have the opportunity to talk things out with your manager where it's not like really an open door policy or a two-way conversation. Um, If it's just your manager talking at you, your manager never listening, your manager saying, you know, not giving you the opportunity or the room to grow. Um, First of all, it's not a healthy relationship as far as a manager and a team member. Um, But that would tell me that there's something ultimately in the environment of the company that a manager would feel like it's okay to do that. Because when you're in a healthy environment, you know, your manager should inspire you to be the best that you can be. Your manager should be supportive and they should be 
competent. Um, and if you find that you're not getting that support, then it may be time to move on from the organization. All right, number 18, you notice high employee turnover. If you notice employees are leaving the organization like all the time, um, that could be a really good sign that um, there are some deeper issues. As I mentioned before, mostly a lot of these um, a lot of these things, signs that I'm giving you, I mean, they all go back to ultimately that in that workplace, there may be a deeper systemic issue. You know, high turnover rates, it can give you, if you just pay attention, it can give you an idea about the company culture. And also, if you just dig in deep and ask questions, right? Um, I think you can also learn that as well. So it's really important to just make sure that um, you pay attention, that you ask questions. I mean, it's okay. And it's also okay to ask questions when people have turnover. And I think the way that your leaders answer it will also be a really clear sign to you. Um, if your leaders are defensive and they don't really want to talk about it, then I think it tells you that, hmm, okay. <laughs> but if you have leadership that is like open, as I think I mentioned in the last episode, they're open and they're transparent with you about, you know what? We're trying to figure it out. We may need to make some shifts in our culture. We may need to do something different. Then I think that maybe there's an opportunity, right? But you kind of have to see that they're willing to put in the work. And if they're not willing to put in the work, then it's not going to be worth it for you to just stay around. All right, number 19, your job doesn't suit your lifestyle. We talked about it. We talked about it the last time about... um, you know, work-life balance. And it's sort of the same thing, right? Like if your job doesn't fit, you know, what you need from a personal perspective, you know, you've got a family, you need to get home in time to, you know, do homework, have dinner. Um, Or if you just want to get home, you just want to be home at a regular time. You don't want to be getting text messages at night with someone saying, hey, I sent you something I mean, do you think you could look at it? I mean, so you just want to make sure that like your job aligns to not only lifestyle, but values, because I think those things kind of go together um, as well. All right. Number 20, your self-worth is compromised. Um, Your self-worth should be above anything else, whether in your personal or professional life. Um, If your employer or colleagues make you question your self-worth, then you should consider it as a sign to lead. Um, Doing a job that questions your self-worth will disturb your mental wellness, and you should really strive to grow in a company that adds worth and not diminishes it. So that's really important. Um, Take a look at the people around. Take a look at the people who have been hired, take a look at the people who are in leadership and how they communicate with other people, how they make other people feel. How do people feel when they're in meetings with leaders? Do you feel valued? Do you do you walk away from those meetings? I know out of my last job before this one, I mean, I remember we would have these town hall meetings and people would leave and people would you know start chatting during the meetings actually. And people would feel like really bad. A lot of times people are like, oh, like, I mean, you know, we've done all these things and it's like, it's not enough. Or people just always felt like under undervalued, not appreciated. And it never felt like you were doing enough. So I think in those situations, you want to consider um, a different organization. All right, and last your confidence is affected. So I think those two go hand in hand, your self-worth, worth, but also your confidence. If you're in a situation where you just always feel like, I don't know, should I be here? Am I good enough? I don't know if I can do this, but you know you can do it, right? But the environment in which you're in is not 
one that is supportive, um, one that is that sort of like majors in breaking people down, <laughs> majors in breaking people down to see how far how far can we take it. You know, you don't want to be in an environment like that. You want to be in an environment where people support you, where people um, know your know your value. They know what you bring to the table. And I think you know it starts with the managers. It starts with it starts with the leadership because if leadership doesn't send that message down to managers, then managers, I mean, for the most part, some people will, some people are really just great leaders and they make a point to do that with their people, celebrating them, you know, making them feel supported, you know, telling them like how great they are, telling them that they're doing a good job, helping them to grow. But if you have a top of an organization who does not support or who does not live by that, it'll be very hard for um, everyone involved to, um, for people to feel confident in what they're doing. Okay. All right. So that was our list for today. Quick recap. Number, um, oh gosh. Okay. Number 11, (laughs) you're finding ethical misalignment. Number 12, your health is affected. Number 13, Lack of passion. 14, you don't feel empowered to share your voice. 15, you often receive negative feedback. 16, you often procrastinate. 17, your manager is intolerable. Number 18, you notice high employee turnover. Number 19, your job doesn't suit your lifestyle. Number 20, your self-worth is compromised. And number 21, your confidence is affected. So if you fell into this episode today and you're like, hmm, she started at 11. If you just go back, there's a part one um, to this episode and you can get numbers of one through 10. If you want to hear more in depth, I know I did a recap earlier, but if you want to hear the full the full spiel, head over and listen to that episode, um, part one of the episode. All right, so before I go, Remember, head over to globegirl.com and you can listen to previous career series episodes as well as my interview episodes with amazing guests. They are amazing. I do have great guests. I love talking to them and they are guests that talk um, from a range of things to um, entrepreneurship, business, um, career, um, starting a business. Um, so many different topics, confidence, being assertive, health, a lot, lots of things. So um, great episodes with people who are definitely giving out really great, tangible resources and tips and tools that can help you all on your own personal journeys. And then there are these career episodes, which are featuring me. Um, I am just taking you down a journey of really my professional, some, some, um, experiences that I have had in my career, but also just covering some topics that are timely and things that people are going through today. So as always, if you have a topic, you have a thought, something you like to share, please feel free to email me at hello at globegirl.com. And then while you're over at our website, glowupgirl.com, you can also take the career quiz that I created. Um, It's called, Is It Time for a Career Change? Guess what? After talking about all these signs, red flags today um, in this episode, maybe go over and take that quiz. It'll help you determine one of three things. One, you're happy in your career. You're finding purpose. You're ready to elevate. Number two, eh, you're okay. You're not sure if you're finding purpose. You don't know if it's a long-term thing. Um, You don't know if you want to elevate it. And three, nope, it's time for me to pivot. No joy lives here. Maybe I need a new job. Maybe I need a new career path. And once you take that quiz, if you want to have a chat with me, you can schedule a 15-minute discussion. We can talk about how I can help you um, discover those unique strengths you have or help you to plan a put a plan in place because ultimately it's about getting to a place to creating a career that you love something you wake up and you find purpose and passion in every day 
right? That's what it's about. That's ultimately what this life is about. If you're, if you have to work, which we mostly do have to work. If you have to go to a place every day or get online for a job, you should find purpose in that and you should be excited to do it every day. All right. So I hope you all have enjoyed this episode. I hope you have found these tips to be helpful. Um, I thank you all so much for your support. I thank you for taking time out of your day to pop in. Also, if you are on a platform where you can leave a review, I'd love for you to leave me a review. That would be so nice of you. Um, If you're not following us, follow us. Share this podcast with your friends and family. Um, Also subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. I'm tired. I've been talking a lot. So (laughs) anyway, well, thank you all so much again. I hope you all have a fabulous rest of your week and weekend. Thank you for joining. And until next time, stay focused, fab, and glow up. Take care, everyone.